first started on this project, I was invited to sit in on this workshop and there were these marine ecologists, industrial partners, terrestrial based scientists uh, that work with agriculture. And I was sat on this panel listening to how they were gonna solve this problem about sustainable aquaculture. It was really nice being a fly on the wall listening to these guys pull this work together, uh, which is actually a really complex bit of science. It was interesting for me because then I had to sort of present where I'm coming from and how I might communicate their scientific research uh, through music. It was the Colin Pillinger Award for public engagement. Uh, and that was through the Royal Society. It's to do with this current project, so conceptualising, putting a composite, like a multimedia composition in around um, this research about sustainable aquaculture. Much like music works with the moving image, if you're watching a film, like music provides all the subtext, we could do something similar with science and look at maybe um, some of the more tricky areas with the science and fuse that with some infographic material, some uh, emotional music, evocative music, uh, and present an audience with a chance to self-reflect on their own practices and some of their own decisions. You were telling me about Richard's PhD. We were having a coffee in Salamanca Place over breakfast, and we had this kind of Epiphany. Mm. Yeah. This is what we need to do. Yeah. We need to work on aquafeed. And we literally ran back to your office, didn't we? We uh, ran back. <laughs> we went to the whiteboard oh, and we started drawing. scribbling on the whiteboard. And we literally wrote this um, research grant proposal in three hours, three maybe. Hours. And a few, couple of, it was about a day later, we were in Taruna for a different meeting to go and meet uh, Katrina McLeod. Um, and we were talking to Chris, who was the head of is was was the head of the aquaculture facility. Yeah, he still is. Yeah. And we told them about the idea, and they both kind of sat bolt upright. Katrina was just like, "This is brilliant," and that's where the "be careful what you wish for" idea came. Yeah. From. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Chris, what did he call this? A new paradigm, a game changer. <laughs> So I took all of this information with me back to the UK, along with some interview transcripts from the people that I was speaking to here. And I started to compile um, a few different themes from it all, which eventually became uh, trike titles. Uh, which was nice, because then I was able to sort of, well, I kind of approach like doing a film or a TV programme. I started to create the music for that purpose. That's the process that the three of us went through when we were kind of conceiving of, of what we might do for the performance that, that you, and the piece of music you've written. Um, we, we threw lots of ideas around, didn't we? And the, the workshop mm. that you presented at um, kind of fueled lots of, lots of discussion points. Do you know what, actually, like philosophically then, I'm taking that further, because you've not seen it yet, but there's like a framework for the music, which is stuff that I've already written, which is based on your input, your uh, interviews. So there's like, you know, every song's the set amount of time every time I perform it, because it's all to track that I've produced. But within that, there's loads of space and most of it's improvised. So what, I'm, what you're going to see is like a load of improvised music. And it, like philosophically, it's like similar to what we're talking about. I'm in this space to like experiment. Yeah. You know, you'll call it experiment, I call it improvisation, it's the same thing. Any medium you can use to bring and involve scientists in their communication is crucial. It's the whole point of... It helps you mm. reflect back on mm. the science too. Like for yeah. me, it affects how I think about things in a way that I didn't anticipate. Really, and I, th I think it changes how you communicate, not just out with the the academic community, but also 
as a scientist. Mm. I, I, I know from doing the sci art stuff, if I look at my writing now, published journals aimed at scientists, I'm, I'm writing completely differently mm. than I did three or four years ago mm. because I've learned some things about narrative story mm. that I didn't know before. I'm going to cite that because, like, when I've been researching the different models of communication, it's always one directional. There's somewhere that it tries to be bi directional, but it doesn't quite I hit the mark. Has been This notion of reconnecting scientists with people and trying to reinstill trust in a post-truth era where we've got this mistrust with scientists and certainly with corporations. So that's what this piece of music aims to do really, is to explore some of those ideas and create a shared space for dialogue for people to think about these things and discuss it moving forward. I love the idea that bringing creativity and meeting um, art with science can, through this piece of music and the visual, which has just blown me away today because I'd heard the music before, but to see it overlaid with the visuals was even more impactful. How important this is as a message carrier for us to be able to share with people the complexity of aquaculture, complexity of the human condition that needs aquaculture as part of many systems that enable us to live and grow and be part of the world. I love the way he's really made it accessible to speak to your heart and to recognise that you can have high level thinking alongside deep emotion and connect the two and reflect on the two. Yeah, the amazing things that I'd felt and thought about listening to that music, it was, I was full of more questions. <laughs>